Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the collaborative uh, Saving Your Disaster campaign in episode, I think we're at 8, episode uh, 7 or 8. It is time for Operation Spider Knife where Tapcat has given me a Neutralize the Field Commander mission. <clears throat> and in his typical friendly and nice fashion. He actually put together a non-troll team on that could uh, quite easily do the mission. We got the classical four, which is always good, some backup grenadier, and we got a scout for us, Reaper, very important class. We also got the mine shield, apparently that now sticks with uh, Mr. Snake, and we got some healing. I think this is still Jester, right? Um, so yeah, he unfortunately is the guy with the combat protocol. He did not give anyone the PCS for mobility, so I will take a short liberty here and we'll add it to the uh, Reaper. Additionally, their weapon, um, good question. I think for later we'll uh, we'll already put an expanded magazine in there, just in case we ever get it to ban uh, to banish. Then that extra magazine will pay dividends. For now, the vector rifle is just a glorious paperweight. It's not doing that much damage, but it can crit quite nicely. So let's get into the mission and uh, let's give it a go. All right, we landed. Well, let's take a good look. It's a sewer system once again, and the sewer system means lack of high ground and very complicated vision distance. So where's our Reaper? There we go, Raven. Raven will start to take, uh, start to spot everyone out. So far so good, couldn't find anything. In the meantime, let's establish a firm foothold. Good. As always with the commander uh, missions or destroy the commander missions, nothing will start before we are entering uh, before we're losing concealment and are entering the first actual battle. I go where I Since need. that is how it works. What would appear to be a single entity is actually a swarm of tiny oh, wow. units. Spectre is that earlier in the campaign? To maintain a cohesive form. Time to motor. Okay, I'm just putting up a defensive parameter here. Affirmative. Moving out. Roger. I got my eye on closely. <clears throat> Good. Moving to designated position. Let's be a bit careful. Uh, I think okay. we can stand back with the backliners and have a proper front-to-back team composition here. Understood. Moving out. Good. Makes sense. Everything, everybody is in a good and uh, valuable position. Now let's move up with the Reaper. Still not clear where the commander is, but we're going to find that out. to uh, go in there next turn for now we're just keeping our position yes. 
Relatively speaking, tough packs. We have now entered the mid game. I am surprised about the specter. I go where you tell me. Wow, that's a, another nasty pack. I'm just trying to figure out where that command, uh, where that general is located. That's the objective I was looking for. Which means we are going to use the opportunity. Favor fortunes the brave. By the way, there's a funny story towards that saying. I don't know if it's true or not, so this is uh, YouTube documentary knowledge. Uh, I haven't checked the actual source of that, but um, out of a video of CoffeeZilla, I think it was, um, he went and researched uh, the origin of uh, that quote. Apparently it was um, a Roman general uh, who was interested in the Vesuv or another uh, volcano that was about to erupt and his line of uh, thinking was we That's need to get closer with the ships uh, and we need to like explore it uh, really Come from uh, from close distance and he mentioned go, that go. statement to his crew unfortunately all of them died so fortune indeed does not necessarily favor the brave Go, go, go. Overwatch. But for the reference of this one here, maybe fortune favors the brave. I just want to play some clean XCOM and show you how to deal with these types of missions. So we would have a decent, decent but not good chance to hit this guy, but it would be one that allows us to immediately kill him if we hit. Position. Good, we're moving into a position where we can overwatch. We're going to do exactly that. We're going to do a bit of a double whammy here. And this should... Um, hmm. Yeah, reduce the cover over there and there. Let me think that through. Um, three points of damage, six from the claymore will not kill the the mech, um, but will injure both of them mech potentially will move first no the commander is the leader of the pack so commander will move first and therefore get the attack from the overwatch which is exactly what we want a couple of other uh, things here Confirmed. i want to use our concealment bonus which is important Concealment uh, means Heading to that location. no disadvantages for overwood shots. Roger that. We're going to go with a almost full 
I have an overwatch trap here. Raven would be the only one who is not overwatching and uh, since it's just a pack of two, let's do this here. It takes away a lot of the cover as well. And we should be able to kill them completely from the get-go. Overwatch shots are currently as if they would be shooting into the open. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we're going to trigger new hostiles now. Our resistance contacts had heard rumors Advent might be rolling out a heavy infantry armor system. Looks pretty tough. Watch the side. Well, that's the disadvantage of going in and killing them in one turn. All of the enemies are triggering. Well, look at you. <laughs> okay. That shield bearer is an absolute annoyance. So we're clearing the flank from behind. Let's see, can we hit somehow hit both? Well, that would hit both, but unfortunately, neither of the subjects. Hmm. Tell you what, uh, how about freeing up this guy? Careful to not trigger that other pack. Moving over here. Solid hit, and that might be a crit kill. Yep. Good. Solved our problem very well. Forty percent chance to actually kill the viper because the crit would kill her. Of course, she dodges. That's unfortunate. Helping Raven with an aid protocol before finishing that Viper. Fifty fifty on a crit. And that is a 77, uh, so 80% chance to actually fully kill this guy, which we're going to take. Enemy eliminated. Okay. 
Um, we could, uh, could hit both relatively easily. Moving into full cover because I don't want to be the guy that is standing out in the open and then we're hitting both that removes the poison spit ability and also means uh, that the specter can't uh, use its psi abilities and not take over so they will just try to attack normally. Matter of fact they are not even trying to do that. All right, back, needed to take a sh uh, short break. Uh, we can see that this pack here has added, but not yet activated themselves, which is a lucky intervention. I am considering Could we theoretically lop a grenade through the wall and actually hit all of them? That would be so cool if we could do it. This might trigger, not 100% sure. No, but it barely worked out. So this will hit two, if not three of them and remove the cover. Interesting. There was an opening here. Oh no, that we blew up the opening. Okay, well that makes sense. Good. In terms of moving forward. That should be a kill. Oh yeah, good one. Moving as ordered. We can get the loot in a second. For now. Oh yeah, let's hit him with a nice little critical hit. Down to one HP, so. up to here that could be a kill very nice 10 points of damage is right. a respectable crit are we outside of explosion range one two three yeah we are let's see if this is a kill well we were outside of explosion range but as so often, sometimes you just fall down. All right, I'll go. Big deal. Weapons burning ammo fast. Interesting. Watch the flanks. They're moving. Well, you know what would be cool oh, if we had a revival protocol. That would actually get him out of this, but no. The Spectre put a dedicated focus on getting the one person that can get others out of Shadowbound. But that's okay. 
He will pay for that insolence. Absolute minimum damage, uh, but we got demolition. On my way. Which should remove the heavy cover. Can't really see that thing. Already there. I somewhat suspect that that is the less last enemy, which is why I am willing to kind of go a little bit more aggressive here. Just a little off. But his dodge is more powerful than our ability to hit. Good, we're going to take damage. Hopefully no one will die. But that sucks. Two dodges in a row. And we lost our loot on top of that. Not optimal. Starts healing himself. Our psionic abilities. Our soldiers are suffering out there. We'll need to give them some time to recover when we get back. <laughs> yeah, loot unfortunately has expired. Is it clear? We do not have uh, an outloader, right? No, we don't. Yeah, I played cleaner missions in my lifetime, but at the end we got the job done. It was a little bit uh, of lack of luck. The rest was fine, I mean, we actually killed all of the packs without even taking any uh, hits. But yeah, the, the last one was a bit of a problem and to this day I still don't like how they have skilled Jester. Hello, Commander. Okay, we're... Uh, I'll do something about it. Losers complain, winners train. Thomas Martin. I regret to inform you, but your abilities suck. You are going to be reskilled because I want medical protocol. I cannot, with a good conscience, hand over uh, this uh, campaign and then give back combat protocol. It is such an absolute disaster of uh, of an ability. Although I should say the following. We have not checked the actual training abilities, and that is. I was somewhat hoping uh, Tapcat would do it, but uh, I think he was hoping the same. So that is how we ended up with 56 uh, XCOM standard points. Tell you what, uh, holo targeting is great, and hence we're going to do that. 10 points is a steal. Untouchable for 10 points? Oh, okay, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Uh, fortress, that is good. Uh, we got 11 points left over. Uh, 
Aftershock isn't bad, but Amplify is even better. And more chance to generate focus, also good. Good, here we got someone who has a lot of points by himself. Blade Master would be great. Blast padding wouldn't be bad either. I think we're going for Blade Master first. And he doesn't even have Shadow Step. That's not good. Yeah, we don't want to skill all of them, just the main team. But here is Jester. Oh boy, he's so much better just with those two skills. I don't even need to reskill him. That is great. I tell you what, I sponsor I sponsor you a scanning protocol on top of it because it's actually a good ability, and I would well, love to see Tapcat use it. So back to the abilities we got a nice little sharpshooter here and i think quick draw is a great additional ability might as well use it templar could use amplify it's a good ability could use aftershock not a bad ability either Jester, we already gave plenty of options. All time mix, not really good. Dead Eye, mm, so and so. Snake. I like the idea of Conceal. He has 21 points by himself. So. Conceal allows to re-dip into the shadows. Covering fire, typically not the best ability for for a ranger because he's not, well, overwatching that often. Conceal, however, could work uh, relatively well. Mm, Shadow Strike is not that bad either. I mean, we could go Phantom Shadow Strike or Phantom Conceal. Which would really make him more of a scout. And he's genius level, which means he will get more abilities. But let's maybe do that. It didn't cost us a lot. We got untouchable here with Titan and that extra one armor is just free. So yeah, the prime soldiers got a lot of abilities out of that and I finally got my wish that our, that our specialist is no longer just having the wrong protocol. We got an engineer here. Not a bad idea to get that. We're still missing alloys. Do we have alien alloys somewhere? We got intel and that's about it. Has he checked the black market? Not sure. Let's just double check it. We might be slightly wasting time, but purchases at the black market aren't bad yeah we're getting the alloys for armor research and given that we have so little alarium let's just get some alarium as well you never know when you need it back to the engineer because now we can upgrade our armor which is potentially currently the weakest spot in that entire campaign our inspiration did prove beneficial yeah because he needed to go shadow chamber 
and we even inspired our plated armor so that's good we're the game is allowing us to catch up with um, with the timing here our cooperation has proven to be a boon to the resistance we just got some new intel on the children. yeah that was clever that could uh, had uh, started finding uh, finding the chosen with the resistance factions has motivated them to share some new information on the chosen okay we got lieutenant a lieutenant option here you know what we're going to be a bit greedy on that one mobility I would typically put that on the Templar, so instead, and since we need aim, aim is good on our main on our main grenadier. So what do we need? A sergeant and then a soldier to not be wounded. Okay, well easy enough. Take one of those and we're just putting a rookie in there and let's not put a rookie in there commander all right guerrilla tactics school i would like to have a further specialist very good engineering weapons gremlin mark 2 upgrade is not too bad we're missing alloys that's the biggest downside at the moment Just getting all of the alloys upgraded. There's a Mimic Beacon. Okay, well, we're not going to skip on that one. We noticed early on that the Avenger has a tendency to dip forward when the power core is under load without the engines engaged. At first I thought maybe it was a stabilizer issue. But now I'm starting to think it's all just part of the alien's grand design. All right. Well, blue screen protocol, one more day and we're ready to rumble. That will be a great breakthrough for us. Could go with a skull check. Frost bomb isn't bad either. I think we're going to go for the frost bomb which is a good idea. Hello, Commander. And in terms of building items, uh, two times blue screen rounds, please. Thank you. Enemies are having the bleeding status. That's not good. We got the frost bomb going. <laughs> Which brings us to the next question. Are we really going for the bolt caster? Potentially not, but the school jack might be a good idea. I'll finally take Mary out of here. Instead, we're helping with further clearing. And we might need to build a few more base base items as well. I'm just realizing that we're behind. So let's see. Proving grounds, resistance ring, guerrilla tactics school, training center. That's a good start. Infirmary would be good. So, Commander, we've pushed our current power systems to the limit. 
We don't have any capacity to spare, which means we can't expand our facilities further. Putting more capacity in here, and what else could we do? Um, resistance comms w would be not too bad. Shadow chamber, of course, could happen as well. Um, Good. Infirmary as the next one isn't bad. That is a good start. Maybe the resistance could learn something from me. Bit of sabotage. Not bad. Could be worse. Uh, but now we're finally raiding an advent train and that will give us plenty of alloys. So that's an important mission for us, but it's also a difficult mission in order to get that campaign back on track, which is why Tabcat is going to play that one. Let me prepare the team for him. So, I would want to continue the double spark action. Take that, lightly wounded, and take two are both going on to the mission. If you like it or not, they are on that mission. Now, we got... Uh, sniper head doesn't have the weapon upgraded yet, so that's a not so good idea. Um, how about instead we're taking... Incarnio. Carnio Grasa. Okay, so both of them are bondmates, I see how it is. Jester is not the bondmate of anyone, so it would actually be better to have Encarnio with us. Uh, we have invested quite a bit into Jester. Let's do the training center. Uh, where is Encarnio? Encarniacion. Okay, cool. Well, medical protocol for you, milady. And whilst we're at it, a bit of haywire protocol as well. So that looks like a good, really basic, but a good uh, specialist. And since they are best friends, it is a perfect time to put both of them onto the single mission. Crypto is her name. Encarnacion Garza. And finally, we got Snake here. We know that Svetlana is Steel's bond mate. Albert Steel is still out of commission. Not, not the less, uh, nonetheless, we can get Svetlana onto this mission. Let's give her the magnetic weapon. Big fat launcher, that's good. I think I'll put in the frost bomb. So that uh, Tapcat has a little bit of fun with a grenade, that's good. Then we're going to put blue screen rounds uh, here. That's good. We're going to put the mine shield over here. And uh, crypto. Is getting some good equipment now. We still don't have all of the upgrades, but I will give him a mimic beacon. 
Yeah, that should keep him safe. This is a very solid team. We got plenty of explosions, right? We got a Mimic Beacon. Oh, we don't know if uh, Chosen is there. There might... Well, it is a... Hmm. It's likely that there is a Chosen. So back to the Mind Shield. Mind Shields are a good hard counter against Chosen. And... We got Explosives. Might as well give the Mimic Beacon over here. So she really does crowd control. It's a little bit of a different setup. I appreciate that is rather atypical. But I think overall it could work well. Cool. Yeah. Look, guys, uh, this seems to be a good uh, moment to end uh, the mission. As always, I thank you for watching. If you are interested in saving your disaster campaigns, uh, my channel has a couple of them available. If you are interested in awesome guides and a uh, great uh, playthrough of XCOM 2, Tapcat's channel has quite a few of them. can highly recommend them. So check the channels out and have a good one. Bye-bye.